And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome into the Captain Jack Show here on Twitch.tv. A very special friend of mine on with us today, Stone Freeman, one of the play-by-play -play broadcasters for Your View New England, URI football, URI basketball, a uh, fellow colleague of mine from the, our WRIU days on the show for us today. we got a lot to talk about uh, with Stone and some other topics that we'll touch upon to start off your Monday. Thanks so much for tuning in. And Stone, thanks so much for being on the show today. Man, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Happy to. We're doing healthy, Jack, and uh, I don't know if I'm lagging a bit here for you, dude, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, just a little bit of lag, but hopefully that doesn't, uh, that doesn't hurt us too much. My computer might not be able to handle three things happening at once. But <laughs> we, we got your audio loud and clear, which is fine, and uh, yeah, so it, it's been a really crazy time, uh, obviously, with everything going on. We'll talk a little bit about that, but... We just wanted to give the audience some background as to where you started with broadcasting, sports broadcasting, uh, and sports journalism as a whole. Um, just really take us through the, the first moment in your lifetime where you said that you know sports reporting, sports broadcasting was a, a field and something that you wanted to get into. Yeah, we had a, I went to Bishop Hendrick in, in my home city of Warwick, and uh, they had the story that I've always told is there was a day where I was sitting in the computer lab and the afternoon announcements came on and normally you didn't pay attention to those, but I paid attention for some reason on this particular day. And I heard if you're interested in sports reporting, sports, uh, play by play writing, whatever, come to the computer lab after school. And I was like, well, I'm already at the computer lab, so I might as well stay. And, uh, yeah, we, we started the, the Hawks sports network and, uh, things kind of just, got off and running we we created um you know a following in high school from sophomore to senior year and then i applied to i don't want to say bigger schools but schools that had bigger well-known journalism programs not like the university of rhode island at the time but um you know i think you is on the come up but at the moment five years ago there was no sports media minor major in the mm -hmm. works anything like that um but that led me to going to, to turning down uh, I got into like Emerson and Quinnipiac nothing like with a Syracuse name to it but I also didn't want to go too far away from home but I got into two two schools that had you know you know alumni at least in the field that were pretty big not that URI doesn't but I didn't picture myself going to roadie and then my sister was at URI and things just kind of fell into place I uh, I went there I did it for four years with you and, and Sam Murray and Ben and Josh and all these different, you know, slew of characters that were, that were in and out. Um, and now it's led me here with the, with this degree and no job. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I've done, I've done a lot. I worked with URI last year, um, doing play by play and whatnot for, for football and men's basketball and women's basketball in your view. Uh, get to do some high school football, uh, basketball, AAU basketball for your view. Um, and now it has led us to 2020, which it seems like you can't get out of your own way in the sports world because mm -hmm. we're trying to find some type of normalcy again. But there are far bigger issues than making sure that, that, that we're tipping off come November, in my opinion, which I know we'll probably get into. Mm -hmm. um, but now it's just about um, I'm getting my master's degree now. So I'm, I'm back as a full-time student, uh, um, and I'm about 12 credits away from another degree. So that's that's kind of where I'm at now. Yeah. That's awesome. That went by really fast, huh? Yeah, it's a two-year program. I took some summer classes. Uh, I bulked up my first two semesters, mm -hmm. and now I'm 17 credits in. I need 13 left. So this time wow. next year, there'll be a second degree rate nice. there. That's awesome. Yeah, so. That's great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So in school, obviously, there, there was a ton that you did. I feel like you hit every single internship that there possibly could have been in the state of Rhode Island, you know, with the sports hub, all these different sure. things. Was there one internship or experience that you had in college that stood out from the rest? Uh, I think there's two. I think it was my first one with, uh, well, my first two with the Ocean State Waves, um, which we were just joking off there because the program that you're using to do this uh, Captain Jack show to get to Twitch's uh, OBS, which is a software system that I had to learn essentially overnight to broadcast these Waves games, so it brought me back to that. And also with ABC6 and Providence with Nick Coit and Ian Steele, just because it taught me, you know, yeah, sports is great. I mean, we love it, but like it is a grind. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, that NACBL season, again, was the most the, the biggest learning experience I could imagine. There's a 44-game season, and I think the Waves that year won 27 games or something. Mm -hmm. It was bizarre. Um, so everything, it, it was so quick and fast-paced, but getting on a bus to go to Danbury, where I know you've had some experiences, or um, Montpelier, Vermont, Sanford, Maine, all these random places around New England, and figuring out that bus Wi-Fi is not very good yeah. and, um, you know, you're getting home at 2 o'clock in the morning just to get back to a ballpark, even though it might only be Old Mountain Field, getting back somewhere at, at you know, 12 noon to make sure the press box is set up and you're prepared to go for mm -hmm. 6 o'clock. So that was a grind. Uh, ABC6, I got to do stuff with, like, the Patriots and stuff, like a lot of internships do, but it was really like, yeah, you're coming with us to Gillette today. And I was like, oh, great. And then next thing you know, you're holding a microphone next to James Harrison when he randomly signs with the Patriots for the last, like, three weeks of the season. And you're like, did not expect to be doing this as a 19-year-old. And then the, the Sports Hub was crazy because that was, like, I don't know, I felt like nothing against Providence, but, like, once I got an internship in Boston and I'm going to Boston once a week and, mm -hmm. and you know, URI football was really good that year and by really good six and five, but we started <laughs> off – Started off really. That's a high. great year for them. Yeah, it is four four and one, and we almost beat UConn. And I'm getting to the sports hub on a Sunday, and I got like Mark Bertrand, the Beatle from ninety eight mm -hmm. five. Like, damn, you are I beat Delaware the other night, huh? And I was like, wow, like this is again not where I expected myself right. to be at twenty one. But yeah, it's it's a blast, and it's taught me that uh, sports is, is is a field that I. I have found some comfort in, which mm -hmm. is which is really good. You know? Oh, that's awesome. That's great. So now, you, obviously, you mentioned you're at the graduate program at URI. What was the decision-making process to do that uh, versus trying to go out uh, right after college and, and get a job in the field? Yeah, not to get too philosophical, but I made a decision about a year and a half ago to completely throw away my expectations because mm -hmm. you never know what's going to come. Nope. So uh, very similar to that story I told about high school, I'm literally walking, I can remember, I'm walking by the Memorial Union, and it's like, I don't know, I want to say February, and I got an email that said, you don't have to take the GREs because you're going to come to URI anyway for a master's degree. If you're interested, you need X, 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 and X, and I was like, I called my mom, and I was like, Mom, I think I should just do this because I don't know what I want to do next, mm -hmm. um, and communication is a little different than journalism, which I'm which I'm realizing. Same ballpark, but, but you know, different, you know, different baseline I guess would, mm. would be the correct terminology um, but I, I, I've enjoyed it really really so far and I've used it too I mean sports are great we love sports um, but I've used it as an opportunity to start something different you know uh, researching things that aren't sports related researching things that um, communication is very broad so you can mm. find out a lot more about different things so it's been honestly like a my education has been a, a step out of the sports world, which I think you need every once in a while. We can consume ourselves in sports, but like if you told me in February that March would roll around and the tour NCAA tournament would get canceled, all the professional sports leagues would come mm -hmm. to a halt. You know, if I didn't have any, if like I ended up keep going to school and stuff like that. And I had to do online learning and all this stuff. That was like a good opportunity to realize, Hey, sports ain't going to be here forever. Mm -hmm. We'd like to think they are. And then you get a pandemic that happens and you go, wait, 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 wait. I got to be prepared to, because a lot of people, it's unfortunate. I mean, obviously, you know, there's a lot of people losing their jobs in this field right now, or, or they're trying to find a job right now, i.e. what probably most 22-year-olds that want to be in the sports field are going through right now. And you're like, who's going to hire me now? And nobody knows. Mm -hmm. Now we, we have a little bit clearer view, right? The NBA's coming back and MLB's coming back. MLS is back, I think, already. Yep, uh, yep, yep. PGA, everything is coming back, but mm -hmm. it just it was a it was a lesson for me personally. Just be like, okay, this is this is something that I can I, I can live without, even though sports for a while mm -hmm. was something I never thought, you know, I could. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like that's a that's a huge realization, and yes. it's the same thing for me. I mean, working with the the hat tricks and uh, the mm -hmm. Colonials, and having our seasons shut down, and both teams were in the playoffs, ready to make some yeah. noise, and all of a sudden everything just stopped and you kind of have to realize that, you know, there are bigger things in life than sports. Yes. And, and it's, it's very important that we, you know, and I've preached this uh, since this whole thing started, do not bring sports back unless we can do so safely. 
And yes. for all the people who say, you know what, this is not, I, I can't come back. Buster Posey has said it. You know, a couple NBA guys have already said it. They're not going to play because they don't want to put their families at risk. They don't want to put themselves at risk. Uh, and I think that's the right decision for them to make is, is to, you know, make sure that they're taking care of their own before they do something that put themselves in danger. Yeah, I think I think it's said a lot, but but I've always cited on this. And granted, I'm I'm only 22, so I'm not going to make it seem like I've covered the biggest of the big. But when my biggest thing in covering sports is understanding that they're people too. You can mm-hmm. criticize them because to me, they uh, in particular professional athletes. I mean, they, they get paid to do something. If you get paid a top dollar and you're not performing in any profession, it comes with criticism. So I I don't mind when people critique or people analyze that that's not what i'm saying but there are certain human aspects like i think the buster posey is a great example because i think they said he just adopted two two babies mm-hmm. too why, why would you want to risk yeah. anything from a person perspective mm-hmm. there and that to me is where you just go okay look in a moment like this it's so unprecedented sports can go on the back burner in particular when people are trying to make important decisions like like should they go to an nba bubble i mean those mm-hmm. i granted it's safer i think it's safer right. these guys are now if you win if you win the finals right you're there until october and you just left your family mm-hmm. in july i mean that in itself is a yeah. huge human interest and human perspective that we have to take into consideration that yeah they might be healthy or they're part of the demographic that you know is is whatever you you hear every number nowadays but 99 percent survival rate 99.9 percent survival rate we're not numbers, though. We're people. Mm-hmm. Like, like, let's look at it from that perspective. And it can be tough. I'm not saying we all got to agree on it, but just, just give these guys and women the credit that, that you know, the same thing happened with all the social injustice and stuff mm-hmm. that was going on. People that you don't, they don't feel comfortable playing a game when they feel like there's bigger stuff. Let them worry about that. That's that's their right as a human being, and we're we're, we're all going to be different. That's no big deal. But let's at least respect one another in the decisions that yeah. we're making. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Very well said. Um, so obviously with everything going on and college sports is something that both of us have had experience in obviously that's your realm right now with your view and sure. with the uri uh, communications department at the athletic department how realistic do you see at least the fall season at this point we've already seen the ivy league cancel fall sports the patriot league announced today that they're canceling fall sports uh, i know that the SEC is going to do everything in their power to play football this season, but how realistic do you see that we see fifty percent of schools participate this fall? Yeah, it's 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 a it's a twofold answer for me. First, and and I have seen this on social media, so I won't take credit for it, but I think it's a great point. I mean, the Ivy League was the first conference to cancel men's basketball and women's basketball back when the pandemic was. I mean, we didn't know it was going to be as big as it mm-hmm. is, but those first couple weeks of March and people thought they were nuts. Oh, no, no, we'll just go without fans. And then you quickly go from going without fans to a Big East tournament game being stopped at halftime. I mean, you you can't prepare again for stuff like this. So with everything so changing, um, it's best to obviously look at what medical professionals um, and to a certain degree, obviously, your, your elected officials and what they think and what the people that are getting paid the big bucks to make these decisions are doing. Um, I don't know in terms of how I feel personally. I, I, I haven't talked to anybody that I think is, is you know, where I can say for sure what's going to happen. But I can say this. I'm not ready for sports if it comes at the expense of another spike in cases mm-hmm. or mass hysteria. Like to me, November and December is when you want to be with family because if mm-hmm. every holiday in the books fall into those two months. Are we going to risk October filling football stadiums just for a spike in November? Then you go back into lockdown. I mean, we couldn't have, in my family, we couldn't have Easter with each other. We couldn't have anything like that. I, I, I would rather, you know, everything get done the right way and wait until maybe winter sports come around than, than not. We all want football, right? I, I, don't, I don't think anybody yes. deep down inside would be like, oh, cancel football. But, I mean, if it comes, again, at the expense of, of – the well-being of people that's where there's there's a lot of decisions that have to be made and i think over the next two weeks in particular if, if the patriot league and the ivy league two academic driven conferences are making these decisions 
Yeah, the SEC, the ACC, they're going to make decisions based on based on dollars and cents, to be honest. I mean, let's just call a spade a spade here. But we, we got to make sure that if we're really going to say we're all in this together and the health and well-being of our student athletes are at the forefront, then we need to make decisions in the best interest of the health and well-being of the people that are going to be in these football stadiums every single day. 100%. 100%. So obviously, I think I think you're right. With over the next two weeks is when we'll really start to yeah. see different conferences and, and the different sports and what they're going to potentially do. Because you think about all those big schools, Auburn, LSU, coming off of a national championship, yes. Alabama, they're not going to want to throw away an entire football no. season. They're not going to want to cut down their football season at all. They're going to try everything in their power to get those games in this year. Um, so let's take a step aside from – the negative things. There's obviously sure. been some positive things uh, in the sporting world. I think the PGA Tour is doing really well, and we're not seeing a ton of outbreaks there, which is great. Some big news, obviously, around the New England Patriots over the last couple of weeks is the signing right. of Cam Newton to replace uh, the great Tom Brady. Uh, just your initial thoughts uh, on going out and Bill Belichick picking up Cam Newton as a free agent. Yeah, I think it's obviously low risk, high reward. I mean, you got a guy that. There is a risk there, right? I think he played four games last year. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen MVP. I think it's quick to say the Patriots have a former MVP at quarterback. Yeah, that's the positive. The, the negative is, though, that was back, you know, five years ago now maybe? Maybe I'm off by that. That was uh, Super Bowl 50, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that is. that. That's five seasons ago. So a lot can change, in particular the way that Cam Newton plays quarterback. I mean, he's not a pocket passer. Mm -hmm. um, he's a guy that relies on his legs. So to me, he is – an insane athlete. I mean, just based on, you look at all these hype videos, but also the way that he plays. He, he is an athlete. Um, I see no problem with the Patriots picking him up. I mean, that for the contract that they got him, it gives Cam Newton that mentality of incentive base, right, where he's got something to prove, motivational base, where he's been proven doubted in the whole nine, and he wants to get back into the swing of things, but also it gives him a chance it's kind of like when a, when, a, when, a, when a pitcher goes into a contract year. All of a sudden, his ERA is lower, and well, he's, he's got a lot to play for now. I'm excited to see him in New England. I'm more, though, excited and anxious to see um, if the playbook is developed and switched around to work for Cam Newton or if now Cam Newton has to develop and mm -hmm. switch around for the Patriots playbook. I mean, again, Tom Brady's one thing, but the playbook that they used for 20 years – um, with really, I mean, you have Josh McDaniels. There's a couple offensive coordinators before him, and then Bill O'Brien was there when McDaniels became a head coach. But, I mean, you largely have the same playbook um, for not only a quarterback, an entire system. Mm -hmm. So what do the Patriots do there? I'd like to see them just because I think it'd be really fun for a change. I'd love to see them just go buy in on Cam Newton, right? What mm -hmm. does he want? What can we do to get him better? Um I think it'd be fun. I mean, I love Tom Brady, right? We all love Tom Brady, but he's gone now, right? Mm -hmm. It's, 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 I honest to goodness used the same example when Dan Hurley left for UConn. There were a lot of people that were like, oh, I'm out on the program now. We couldn't land Hurley. It's like, nah, dude, I mean, mm -hmm. we got to go program over coach at some point. We yep. all love Dan, yep. but it's program over coach. We all love Tom Brady, but to me, it's team over Tom. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want if, if Brady's in the Super Bowl and the Patriots aren't in it, yeah, I'm going for Tom Brady. But like Buccaneers, Pats, and some foreign universe, if that were to ever be a thing, I'm not. I'm, right. I'm going to lose my allegiance to the Patriots. Oh, come on! So mm -hmm. I, I, I think it'll be good for Patriot fans to see something different. I don't know if I'm high on Jared Stidham yet. Mm -hmm. um, so for now, it buys us another year of of hopefully some type of exciting football. Um, and again, the. the, the, the the AFC East, I, I'm not one to say it's a garbage fire, but it's a place that you can win football games. Mm -hmm. So if, if I think a lot of teams are getting better in that division, but I think the Patriots have a good little perfect storm where they could find themselves at 11 and five and, and a first round by not the, not, not, I'm not sorry, not a buy, but a home playoff game in the first round mm -hmm. um, where you're not a wild card team and we'll see what happens. That was going to be my next question. What do you think the uh, the signing of Cam Newton does to the prospect of Jarrett Stidham? Yeah, I think. I mean, again, it's not that I don't like Jarrett Stidham. Just to me, there are a lot of Patriots fans that have fallen into this category of like, yeah, over the last twenty years, the expectation has been Super Bowl or bust. Hmm. 
you know, I Jared Stidham, I, I didn't see him winning more than eight games at best. I mean, th- that's not his fault. It's just he's never been a starter before. It's it's again, it's a whole new system now that the Patriots as an organization have to deal with. Um, but for now, I, I think Newton, because he's at least played in the league before at the highest level consistently um, and seems to be in great shape now and healthy, I think the expectation now becomes – but again, let me finish that thought and then I'll get to the again part. But he's he's got to be able to do it consistently for 16 games. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that I think will translate to double-digit wins. But the quarterbacks in the AFC are, for lack of a better term, just younger Cam Newtons. I mean Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson. Mahomes not quite – Lamar and Cam much, but these are guys that are new, this new wave of quarterback that that play it fast pace, up tempo, can move outside the pocket, can stretch the field east to west, north to south. Um, that to me has got to be playing into Newton's motivation too. Like what Mahomes and Jackson are getting credit for now, he was doing five years mm-hmm. ago. So if he can come in and kind of, you know, I'm not saying they're going to beat the Chiefs. I'm not saying they're going to win the AFC. I'm just saying that he he's he's looking at the blueprint that the league is going and saying, I mean, this this is me. This is exactly who I am, and uh, I think I think he'll be all right. I think if he can show flashes, at least flashes of what he did in 2015, I think the Patriots are going to be yes. okay waters by any means. I think the the point about the division is a very true point. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I have them at 11-5 and five this year. I really do. I, I yeah. think that Cam Newton is going to be the starter week one. I think mm-hmm. that he's going to show that he's got it. And as long as he stays healthy, that's the biggest thing for them. And we'll see if we do actually have NFL football week one. True. We're crossing our fingers. We're hoping that it's done safely. But uh, – I like the prospect of Cam in New England. I think it could be fun. Uh, Stone, 100%. thanks so much for coming on to the show today. We appreciate it. it. Where can uh, the viewers and the followers find you? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter. It's been uh, I love my Twitter account, um, the Stone Freeman at the Stone Freeman. I'm there every day. Uh, I'm probably there a little bit too much. So uh, check on in and, and interact with me. Hopefully, I'll be uh, I'll be back uh, at a field or uh, or a court shortly. Um, and yeah, Jack, thanks for having me on. I'm glad to see you're doing this too. This is great. This is, uh, this is good stuff. You want to talk about keeping busy during this whole thing. This is, uh, this is quite the setup you got here and, uh, you got some logos down there, right? You got my name at the bottom of the screen. Yeah. That's pretty good. It's better than the, than the Stone Freeman podcast ever had. So, uh, (laughs) keep up the good work, Jack. And uh, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Thank you, Stone. Thanks for coming on, bro. Take care, man. Talk to you soon.